Man, what's up? What's up? It's your boy Dilmo Don Muto. We're back in another video today. We're watching Charlotte saying, What if Go Ten and Gohan were twins? Part eight. And uh trying to think what happened in the last one. Oh yeah, Boo. Bobby and them shit, you know what I'm saying? So we'll see if, if Boo pops out and uh how they gonna handle it. They I mean everybody's pretty strong, so maybe they could team up on Boo and knock him out real quick or get him out real quick and uh Let's get into it. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe as well. Mom. And he has the perfect plan. If he's able to execute this quickly enough, he'll be able to win here. He'll get more than enough energy for Boo, and of course he avoids being immediately killed by everyone. The minds of Vegeta and Raditz seem corruptible. So first, he works on a Vegeta, who's definitely going to be the easier of the two. Raditz will be a little bit tougher, but seeing Vegeta transform, that might be just enough to make Raditz more vulnerable. Vegeta's the first to go Majin, shocking everyone and even angering Raditz a little bit more, which leads a perfect opening for Bobby, who then possesses Raditz as well. Whereas Vegeta might have gave in kind of willingly, Raditz on the other hand was vulnerable. He was angry at the Kais and Vegeta. He normally wouldn't do this, but given the circumstances, Bobbidi was actually able to take over his mind, and it wasn't really willingly. Although there is a little bit of that willingness in there, but it's not to the extent of Vegeta's. And Bobbidi is ecstatic. This worked exactly how he wanted. Damn. This helps him twofold. Got both for one, of them this means more energy for Boo. But also, it's a perfect distraction. Having two Majin servants fighting each other my to keep guys, energy sorry. and keep everyone occupied. Vegeta and Raditz both want to fight each other. Vegeta still holds a huge grudge against Raditz. While he has cooled down, it's been there in the background. There's always been tension and animosity between the two. And as for Raditz, he's volatile right now, mainly thanks to his temper becoming more prevalent here. There's been a lot of things to piss him off today, and some of them are rightfully so. Vegeta will settle the score with Kakarot too later. First, he's going to beat Raditz. The two begin fighting each other. Of course, Goku immediately jumps in to try and stop it, knowing okay. that's probably going to go Get too that. far, and because Shin mentioned it's only going to lend Bobbidi more energy. But also, Shin's kind of in danger here, mainly because of Raditz. Same for Kabito oh, too. Oh, I'm I'm watching the video. I'm, I'm sorry. He tells yeah, Piccolo yeah. he should go to find Bobbidi. He'll be able to actually stop him. Piccolo has more than enough power, and he has knowledge of magic too. Piccolo, of course, is concerned, but he decides to go. And while Goku's busy making sure Shin and Kabito don't die, Gohan and Goten are actually going to be the ones fighting. He knows they're stronger than him, and actually stronger than anyone here. Vegeta and Raditz got a boost in power, but Goku still believes that they'll be able to defeat them individually. Even with that boost in power that they've gotten, the twins can stop these two. Gohan goes to fight Raditz, and Goten goes to fight Vegeta. Although the first thing is actually splitting the two of them up. Because right now it's more of a 2v1v1. They needed to just be 2 1v1s. One one, For Gohan, it's a little bit of an easier battle. He and Goten are equal in strength, but it's easier because Raditz is actually kind of holding himself back here. Trying to break free from Bobby's spell. And also, he doesn't want to hurt Gohan. But at the same time, Vegeta's antagonizing everyone, so he has to try and fight him too. And Goten's giving his everything to stop Vegeta. Unlike Raditz, Vegeta isn't holding anything back. And he's going to do anything to stop fighting Goten and kill Raditz instead. And Goten's kind of annoying him too, especially because he sees no way to defeat him. Although, he has one idea to get him off his back. Now, this isn't a weak point necessarily, but Vegeta could go after this and probably take Goten out of the battle for a bit. Amidst the fight, he's able to grab onto Goten's tail, charging all of his energy into it, and Goten thinks that Vegeta's trying to paralyze him. But he's trained his tail, so that's not going to work. But to his surprise, Vegeta then yanks the tail clean off. And while oh, that's not a weak you. point anymore, ripping it off definitely is going to hurt. It's dismembering a limb. Goten didn't expect him to do that, and this actually does cause a lot of pain. And immediately as he hears Goten yell out, Gohan looks over and realizes what happened. Angered beyond belief at seeing Goten hurt like that, his key flares up and he launches over at Vegeta. And in a blind fit of rage, he attacks with all his power, hitting Vegeta clean in the face with a full power punch, Knock his ass knocking out. him out with no effort. Goten was just about to hop back in the fight and do the same thing, but Gohan already accomplished it. And Goku's pretty surprised. He hasn't seen that in a while, but at least they were in their right to do so. Vegeta obviously went too far. And Goten's pretty bummed because now his tail might not grow back at all. But at least it was that and not his arms or legs. Meanwhile, Piccolo continues his search for Bobbidi. He makes his way through and once he's at the bottom, he he's sees that the Bobbidi's ship. not there anymore. He's teleported himself out, alongside Buzek. But he can't be too far. He's hiding somewhere. Piccolo launches out of the ship, destroying it in the process. He looks around from where he is but decides to get a better view, teleporting him to the lookout. As Kami here, it's a nice little ability to have. So he gets up there instantly, getting a perfect view and immediately locating Bobbidi then teleporting right to him. Of course, the second he shows up, Bobbidi cowers in fear, putting himself in a bubble and then trying to take over Piccolo's mind too. And Piccolo simply punches right through Bobbidi's barrier. Piccolo, He's boy. a lot He's stronger different. than Bobbidi realizes. And not just physically, mentally too. Bobbidi must be mistaking him for the Demon King. He's not that same person anymore. Unlike those two Saiyans, Bobbidi's gonna have no shot at taking over Piccolo's mind. His mind is still far too calm and fortified for that. And Piccolo's able to kill Bobbidi. It seems like this is all over. But back at the battlefield, Shin is kinda worried. That power that they all used in that battle, it might have actually been enough to revive Boo. Raditz falls to the ground and grabs his head, going back into base, and as he gets up, that M on his head is gone. 
Vegeta's nearby and unconscious, and that ammo put an M on your head. Now you, Raditz says Luigi's that he feels brother. And he apologizes, but thankfully, he wasn't the one causing the most issues. Well, that's good. This means Bobbity's dead then, right? So they shouldn't have to worry anymore. But Piccolo then teleports over to everybody, with a serious look on his face. He killed Bobbity, but while he was over there, he saw Boo's egg. I wanted to get as far away as possible. The meter on it was just about to tip over to full. The ground starts rumbling around them. They all immediately feel a dark presence. In the distance, there's a pillar of steam, and they could see something materializing in the air. It's Majin Buu, aimless without Bobbity. And not sure of where to go, he just goes over to where he could sense people, darting across the wasteland, plowing through anything in his way. And he arrives where the rest of the group is. A fight breaks out between them and Boo. And thankfully, with all the people here, they actually might be able to push him back a bit. Now they're not going to be able to outright defeat him. There's four Super Saiyan 2s here. There's Piccolo, who's stronger than normal. Four and Super once Saiyan 2s can't beat Boo. Two, there's going to be a fifth Super Saiyan 2. Kabito has also healed everyone, too. But the thing is, they don't know who they're dealing with. They are able to destroy Boo at first. Actually, a couple times because he keeps regenerating. They have the power to defeat Boo collectively, but they don't know how to defeat Boo is the issue. So they come close to winning here, but they don't win. It's not close enough. By around the third time Boo is completely destroyed, he starts to get a bit hungry too. And surprisingly, he just leaves the battle. He tried to turn some of them into candies, but couldn't. So he wants to go to a nearby city and get some food, or turn the people there into food. He's already a bit annoyed at these people destroying him, but this will calm him down. Although, they don't let him leave. The group continuously tries to fight Boo, which keeps him away from his food. Boo progressively gets more annoyed and more hungry and he's starting to get agitated. The group thinks that with one final push, they could actually defeat Boo here and now. They're just about ready to. But a strange thing happens during the battle. Oh, Boo tries shit. to unleash all his power for an attack, basically blowing himself up, which does an incredible amount of damage, but everyone's able to survive, him, barely being able to avoid the attack. Now, of course, Boo does regenerate from this, but after exploding, he doesn't look as mad anymore. That attack he just did was out of anger, but it wasn't just a normal attack. Amidst this blast, he also accidentally expelled all the evil out of himself. Being somewhat angry at everyone before, and by drawing out all this power in this attack, that anger did boil over a bit. Standing before them are two Evil boos. Boo. Now this seems good for the group because that means Boo's power has to be split. They could just defeat these two Boos and they'll be done with it. Although, while they did avoid that blast, they still were hurt a bit by it. It was pretty massive and they couldn't get out of the way in time completely. So, that slows them down a bit, and on top of that, pretty much immediately after splitting, Evil and Good Boo start fighting. And much to everyone's surprise, this quickly leads to Evil Boo absorbing Good Boo, giving birth to Super Boo. Great, he's transformed again? Well, again, now they know how to fight this guy. Plus, with how long this battle has gone on, maybe there's a way to channel all their power together. Goku even thinks that if Gohan and Goten show that same rage boost that they had before, that will significantly turn the tides. Obviously, by now, the twins have learned to control their anger and channel it into their power, too. But there are rare moments where it goes out of control. Like, for example, what happened with Gohan when he saw Goten was hurt. And they are still able to control themselves, but in those moments of rage, they get more power than they usually have. Boo then suddenly splits himself into multiple pieces, each forming into their own Boo. They glare at the group, and then one of the Boos teleports near them, grabbing right onto Shin and Kibito. And without hesitation, Boo kills the two Kais. Oh another shit! Another Boo grabs onto Goku, launching a powerful attack. Damn, which is Kais? enough to kill Goku, but it does severely injure him. And another one aims his attack at Gohan. He basically did choose his other two targets at random, but he wanted to go after the Supreme Kais. By now, he's obviously noticed that the Kais are healing everybody, and he couldn't let that continue happening. Goku and Gohan say they're fine. Piccolo says he'll get some Senzu beans. He teleports away to the lookout. As Vegeta, Raditz, and Goten have to fight together, Gohan and Goku do try to get back up, but they did take a lot of damage from Boo. He seems more intelligent than he was before. They didn't expect that. As Gohan and Goku lay there, they look over at the crater where the Kaiser were once standing. There's no trace of Shin, but Kibito's still there. Shin was unfortunately completely wiped away. But Kibito's body is there. And Goku can't really tell, but he feels a slight presence from where Kibito's body is. Is there a chance he's still alive? While the others are holding Boo off, of course, there's not really too much they can do, but Boo is getting kind of bored, and he still does want his food, so he wants to wrap this up pretty quickly. But now that he's easily fending everyone off, it shouldn't be too hard to get some food, and even better, he has some perfect targets lying right there. He sticks out a hand, and with one blast, he knocks Goten, Raditz, and Vegeta away, launching them miles over the horizon. Damn. Boo turns over to Gohan and Goku, giving them a sinister glare, followed by a grin. Boo's antenna then darts forward, a candy bean. It's aimed at Gohan, but Goku's barely able to put enough power into a blast to launch himself in front of it with Goku turning into a cookie as Boo walks over, simply stretching a hand out and with one bite, eating Goku. Gohan's paralyzed with fear and anger for a second, and despite his injuries, a fierce golden aura surrounds him. He powers back up into Super Saiyan 2, even stronger than before, standing back up, fueled by his rage. Oh, and in shit. one final stand, being pushed solely by that anger, he tries to fight back against Boo, and Boo knows that he has grown stronger. It's impressive to see this. Had he showcased this before, maybe Boo would have lost, but Boo tells him it's unfortunately too late charging Ki around his hand and piercing it right through Gohan, just to stop him in his tracks. He needs Gohan to stand still before he turns him into candy. Gohan falls back to the ground, 
trying to get back up to fight again. He has one last moment to make a choice here, so he uses this time wisely. He locates Goten's energy and tries to speak with him telepathically. He tells Goten, get off this planet, it's their only shot at surviving. He tells Goten that Boo killed Goku, and likely he's next. But he warns Goten, don't attack Boo. He needs to play it safe for now and wait. What is he saying? He just wants him to leave Earth? How is that even possible? But he tells Goten it'll be fine. He knows that Goten can do it, especially with the help of Raditz and Vegeta, they might be able to win here. Plus, they still have Piccolo, and maybe even Kibito. Shin what the fuck Gohan about to do? So they must have a spaceship or something, or maybe they could even teleport to different planets. Plus, with Piccolo still alive, they have Dragon Balls. So as Not long as Goten, Piccolo and Raditz main die, character. everyone can be revived here, since Raditz has already been revived once. But he needs to do everything in his power to stop this. He's trying to give Goten some sort of hope, and also keep him calm despite knowing that his father and brother just died. But Goten tells Gohan to not say that. Just hold out for a bit longer. He'll save Gohan too. But this time, there's no response. Gohan goes completely unconscious, then turned into food by Boo, eaten by him as well. Goten asks if the other two could sense his key, but Vegeta and Raditz don't sense anything. Piccolo then teleports over to the area, looking deeply concerned. He did get Senzu beans, but it seems like it was too late. He even could have used some of his power to heal Goku and Gohan, but it would have taken far too long compared to the Kai's. He isn't too practiced with healing yet, despite having that ability. And besides, he knew he needed to survive to keep the Dragon Balls intact. He saw everything from up there. And as much as he wanted to save Gohan and Goku, he knew he couldn't be rash and go in and save them. He would have died, and the entire Earth would have been gone. As Guardian, his priorities have to be different here. But with the other three around him, he thinks they could stop this. Plus, they have the Senzus now. Although, he knows that nothing they could do at the moment will stop Boo. He just hopes Goten and Raditz can keep a clear head right now. Raditz does try to keep a cool exterior, making himself look confident. He even pulls out a cigar from his pocket, trying to save face for the sake of Goten. But Piccolo can easily tell that Raditz is faking it. And looking into his mind, he could feel intense anger and regret from Raditz. Anger at himself for becoming a Majin. Anger at his brother and nephew dying. And regret for not being able to save them. Goten also says nothing, but has a serious look on his face. Damn. Surprisingly looking calm. They got that Honestly, nigga. right now, he feels anything but calm. Although he tells Piccolo, teleport them back over to where Boo is. They're not going to fight. They're going to get Kabito. What does he mean? The Kai's died. But no, Goten explains what Gohan told him. Piccolo tells him to wait here a second. As quickly as he can, he teleports there, immediately grabbing Kibito and teleporting away. Boo senses Piccolo arrive for a second, but can't attack in time. And Piccolo could see. Yeah, he still does seem alive. He tries to use his own healing power just to save the Senzus, because they don't know if they'll need them in an actual battle. And surprisingly, he is able to revive Kibito. Piccolo quickly teleports all of them up to the lookout. He says they have no choice. They're gonna have to leave the planet somehow, and he hopes Kibito can get them off here. And Kibito says he can, but are they sure they want to do this? There's no other choice. Goten doesn't like it either. He's gonna have to leave his friends, his family, his girlfriend behind. Vegeta has to leave his family behind too. But it's just like Piccolo was saying before. Damn, Beerus did risk, low key. A big risk, and it's a big sacrifice too. But it's their only shot at winning this. Reluctantly, they all leave Earth, with Kibito taking them to the sacred world of Kai. He doesn't know what they're gonna do here, but maybe they can at least train a bit, try and figure out a new way to win. And Piccolo does have one idea, although he's not sure it's gonna work. He remembers Mori was able to do this, and he said the previous Elder could too. Now with the power to make Dragon Balls, Piccolo has other powers, such as the healing that he just used. So maybe he could draw out everyone's power. He's not sure if it will work, but he could at least try it. And if not, maybe Shenron could help. Sure, they don't have the Dragon Balls here, but Piccolo could try and get them. Or even create a new Shenron if need be. They're still not sure what exactly to do yet, they just needed to escape. At least they have a few options though. But Piccolo starts thinking of what to do, and he might have some ideas. What you gotta do? Kibito. What you got? What you Meanwhile, got? back on Earth, Boo begins his rampage, turning everyone he can into candy. But while on this rampage, he feels something strange within him, and he starts morphing into something else. Unknowingly, when he ate Goku and Gohan, he didn't just turn them into food. They weren't just helping his appetite. He begins manifesting their power and turning into something else completely. Yeah, they back, are that boy Boo, that boy Boo, about to do what it do. Hold on. And then they got Go, Goku and Gohan. Now Goten got a shade today with Vegeta and Raditz with Piccolo. It's, uh, I guess Goten will have his potential unleashed. That's the best the only thing he can do. Raditz and Vegeta about to fuse or something. Uh, that's going to be a nasty looking fuse. Anyway, I'm just I'm just guessing. So shout out to Shalit Uh Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. And I'll catch you next time. Check out the next video right here. Check out the video right here. And I'll, yeah.